Hello guys, we are second year CSE students at Bennett University and for our course Microprocessors and Computer Architecture, we have to make a video on a topic, AMDAS law. So parallel computing is actually not a terrible idea. Some of the very earliest computers to be applied to a serious problem like cryptography in World War II were heavily parallel with lots of units trying to break a huge message at the same time. Big corporate players such as IBM have been studying parallel computation for decades. During the 1960s, a man named Jean Amdahl was director of IBM's Advanced Computing Systems Laboratory. He later uh, you know, formed his own company. But in 1967, his paper entitled Validity of the Single Processor Approach to Achieving Large-Scale Computing Capabilities, he formulated what was known as Amdahl's Law, one of the fundamental laws of parallel computer or program design. Amdahl's law is used in memory hierarchy design as well as in instruction set and processor design. To proceed with the topic, let's now understand few basics of computer architecture which are required to understand Amdahl's law. Computer architecture is the science and art of selecting and interconnecting hardware components to create computer that meet the following goals, functional, performance and cost. The aspects of computer performance is the first mission time, response time and latency. The time spent by the job actively using processor resources is its execution time. The response time for a job is the time between when it becomes active and the time when it completes. The latency is the delay from input into a system that to desired output. The next one is throughput. It is the rate of processing work. The other aspects of computer performances are scalability and performance per volt. How to measure execution time? Execution time is equal to input output time plus is the act of running a computer program, a set of programs or other operations in order to access the related performance of an object. Benchmarking is usually associated with assessing performance characteristics of computer hardware. There are five types of benchmarks, real-time application, modified or scripted application, kernel, toy benchmark and synthetic. Amdahl's law. So, in Amdahl's law, we're going to talk about uh, speed up, efficiency, and cores. So, cores can be arranged in two ways. One is serial, one is parallel. Uh, basically, what happens in serial is, if, even if we increase the number of cores, the time doesn't change, for the execution time doesn't change. But in parallel, when we increase the number of cores, the execution time decreases. So, here we see that the total time is S, that is serial, P that is parallel by C which is the number of cores. Now we'll talk about the basic concepts of Amdahl's law. First is speed up of the parallel of parallel computing. It is the time taken by a single processor to perform serially by the time taken by a single processor to perform parallelly. Next we're talking about the efficiency of parallel computing. We it is equal to performance by number of processors. Here we know that performance is equal to the speed up of parallel computing. So we can replace it by S bracket P by number of processors. So basically what Amdahl's gave is that the speed up is always less than equal to 1. And he gave this basic formula that speed up is less than equal to 1 by F plus 1 by minus F by P which we will look at in later time. From this we derive that speed up is equal to 1 by S that is serial cores plus P that is parallel by C which is the number of cores. But we also know that S plus P is equal to 1. So S is equal to 1 minus P. So our basic formula comes out to be is speed up is equal to 1 by 1 minus P plus P by C. So now we can find speed up in two ways. One is when we have to find the speed up of part of the program. Let's say the program was enhanced by a fraction of 40%. So total speed up will be, speed up is equal to 1 by 1 minus fraction enhanced. Here it will be 60% plus fraction enhanced that is 40% by speed up enhanced. Here we need to remember that fraction enhanced is equal to percentage of original execution time that is affected by enhanced. Do some questions on the basics of Amdahl's law. So we have a question. What is the overall speed up if you make 10% of a program 90 times faster? And there is an, another question similar, similar like that. What is the overall speed up if you make 90% of a program 10 times faster? 
so let's look at, at the first part of the question first so we want to make 10 percent check it out we want to make 10 percent of a program 90 times faster so the rest 90 percent of the program we can't change anything on it and we have to make the 10 percent of the program 90 times faster so let's so this uh, makes me to a complete uh, conclusion that we have to increase the number of cores for the 10 percent of the program and number of cores should be 90s because because we want to make the program 90 times faster and for and we also know that we can only change a thing which is in parallel to make it faster so here parallel will be 10 percent which is indeed 0.1 hence serial is always 1 minus parallel which is 0.1 minus um, 1 minus I'm sorry 1 minus 0.1 which is 0.9 hence for Amdel's law we get to a conclusion speed up is equals to 1 upon s plus p by c c here is indeed course so let me change it its course this is given all right so here putting the formulas inside it we can conclude that it is 1 upon 0 0.9 plus 0 0.1 upon 90 and after calculating it i get speed up for the first question is 1.11 and similarly this was part a similarly for part b i want to make 90 percent of a program 10 times faster so the rest 10 percent is doing going into the serial processor so here core is my number of cores is always 10 because i want to make it 10 times faster and similarly p will always be 90 percent which is indeed 0.1 and s will be 1 minus p as always which is 10% I'm really sorry this is 0.9 and this is 10% which is indeed 0.1 so speed up overall for using Amdahl's law will be 1 upon s plus p by c which is indeed 1 upon 0.1 which is s and plus 1 upon uh, 0.1 plus 0.9 upon number of course which is 10 and after calculating it I get the answer is 5.26 so I calculated different value of speed of for different processors and different computations so this is the first let's look into question 2 of basics of Ramdahl's law so here we have two design design 1 and design 2 and our object objective is to uh, increase the efficiency of a program so the question of design one is says the operation uses FPSQR software and FPSQR is responsible for 20% of the square root execution time speed up this component by a factor of 10. First of all let me tell you what FPSQR software is. It's actually a software hardware I'm sorry it's a hardware which increases the efficiency of a floating point instructions. So let's not go deep into it and let's stick to the question. So this so this uh, operation uses FPSQR software and it's responsible for the 20% of the square root execution time. I'm marking it with underline but just because it's important to solve this question. And we, we have to speed and it's speeding up the so we have to speed up this component by a factor of 10. So keep in mind we have to speed up the 20% of the square root execution time by a factor of 10. So and similarly design 2 is a normal design which is making floating point instructions run faster how much faster two times faster all right and it's responsible for the 50 percent of the square root execution time so we'll make 50 percent of the square root execution time two times faster so for so let's me let me write it down for you so what is our objective our objective is to choose which one is better design one or design two and obviously a, des a design is better which works more efficiently and something which works more efficiently obviously have a better speed up so we'll compute the speed up of both designs and we'll calculate which one is more so for design 1 we are using 20% of the square root execution time so hence our parallel exec parallel processor will be using only 20% of the instructions which is equal to 0.2 and then serial will obviously be 1 minus parallel as stated in the previous question it is equal to 0 0.8 
and we are increasing speeding up this component by a factor of 10 and factor of 10 means we have to increase the codes by 10 hence using Andal's law the speed up will obviously be this is in mind to keep in mind this is capital S not small s capital S speed up and small s is serial instruction which is a upon 1 upon s plus p by c and it's equal to 1 upon 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2 upon 10 and after calculating it we get speed up equals to 1.22 so this is for design 1 guys keep in mind now for design 2 our parallel computation is 50% so 50% equals to 0 0.5 similarly serial instructions are 1 minus 50% which is equals to 0 0.5 again and we have to increase the floating point instruction by two times so here the number of cores is twice obviously so now again speed up equals to 1 upon s plus p by c which is equals to 1 upon 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 upon 2 and after calculating it we get the value of speed up as 1.33 so guys check it out the design one has the speed up of 1.22 whereas design 2 uses the speed up of 1.33 so what's your wild guess about it which one is better design obviously guys design 2 so here we come to a conclusion that design 2 is better than design 1 so guys this is the answer of the second sir so guys now let's come to the last question on, which is on the basis of Amdahl's law. So let me read out the question to you. Suppose you want to enhance the processor used for web serving. The new processor is 10 times faster than the original processor on computation. Assuming that the original processor is busy with computation 40% of the time and is waiting for input output 60% of the time, what's the overall speed up gain? So as you can see the question, we, can, we have to calculate the overall speed up gain. So now let me try to find out few things from the question first of all input output time is basically a time which is taken by the user to input a set of instructions and wait for the output and generally it's always fixed we can't change the time taken for input output because it's always dependent upon user so this input output time is always going to be serial it will be calculated serial wise hence we can only change the 40 percent of the time which is used by the processor to compute some set of instructions and we have to and the new processor which is increasing the 40 percent of the time it, it has to increase it 10 times faster so in order to increase the processor speed by 10 times i have to increase the number of cores and the number of cores should be increased by 10 times so here i come to a conclusion the number of cores are 10 and similarly as i've said serial instructions are always input output which is equals to 60% and it's equals to 0.6 and similarly parallel equals to 40% and it's equal to 0.4 so now by using Amdahl's law I know the formula speed up equals to 1 upon serial instruction plus parallel instruction divided by number of cores and by putting these values in these equations s, p and c from here I can come I can draw the formula and write this into an equation 1 upon 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 upon 10 and by calculating it I get to a conclusion that speed up is equals to 1.56 so this comes makes us to a conclusion that the overall speed up gain is 1.56 Amdahl's law is used correctly and in proper context it does give performance improvement estimates that are often useful to the designer the original formulation of the law was apparently pessimistic with regard to parallel processing but impressive and multi-processing speed up results led to the formulation of the apparently new laws called Gustafson's law which is more optimistic. Many misunderstandings existed in the parallel processing community regarding the nature of performance improvement and applicability of those two laws. Yuan Shi demonstrated the equivalence of those two laws thus clearing up many of those misunderstandings.